Hey guys, Wages World here. It's July 3rd, 2020. Um, come at you with a, a video here. Um, we're just going to jump into it. I'm going to go through a couple comments here real quick. Um, sorry about no video yesterday, but I was really having some issues. So um, I might go into that a little bit later, but not right now. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about Comet Neowise again. Some Corona Hole action going on and all that. So stick around. So I'm going to jump into it here. Um, this is from Native Texan. It says, Greetings to all. I began this morning with a dull headache, then very tearful crying, emotional from 2 p.m. to present. I'm just out of character. Now, that is that right there, Native American, Native Texan, I'm sorry. Listen, you're not, you're not alone. Look at how many replies are there. I didn't, I, you know, I clicked on that and read through them. Um, that right there should tell you, Native, that you're not alone. That should give you some sort of a comfort just knowing that okay and also the human resonance can cause all this guys at least some of it all right all the stats show all the studies show mental health it goes crazy when the human's spiking okay um crime rate goes up all that right and i'm not going to go too much more into that but native just know you're not alone and know that this is not something that is way way out there to be happening to you a lot of us, is, and I'm even feeling this right now, guys. You know, just look around. That's all you got to do. Um, you know, I, and I try to keep all that kind of conversation off of my channel, but I've been asked a lot, and I'm going to address it here at the end of my video today. Um, you know, some of the opinions I have on what's going on around us, because I do think it ties into our space weather, because it's all part of it. It's all together. So, there you go. Um, Amber Ray, I wish I could, I, I wish we could all love one another and all could help each other, be nice people, love one another. That says it all. I mean, if we can't compromise and come to some sort of whatever, nothing's ever going to get any better, nothing's ever going to get done. And that's my fear. And, and, you know, frankly, guys, I don't see anybody bending. And that, that can, that can spell disaster. It really can. Antonio Mendoza. So he's asking how Scott is. So <laughs> Antonio and anybody else is wondering, Scott's fine. He's just trying to get things situated in his life right now. Um, after all the stuff that was going on and everything, he's still, you know, trying to get things on the up and up. Um, um, and, you know, like I said, I talked to him. He's fine. Um, you know, he's, he's staying in, in as good spirits as he can. Uh, you know, and every time we talk, it's not negative, guys. So, you know, he, he's really trying. He's starting to get some stuff done, and it's awesome. So, uh, and I can't say thank you enough for those that, you know, helped him through all that hard times he was going through with, his, you know, with his uh, ex-wife uh, passing away. So, just know that. You guys were a big part of him being able to get back up and stay positive. Just know that. Now, Grant Perkins it says, Should coronal holes, shouldn't coronal holes appear white, not black? Example, why is the inside of the sun black? Well, Grant, let me explain. So I got some stuff here I'll show you. Okay, guys, this is, um, that's a great question, by the way, Grant. Listen, I mean, that, that's, that's right on point. I'm glad people ask those kinds of questions because I can take you right here and I can help you understand better and I can help everybody else that doesn't know um, understand a little bit better too. So when you were looking at these guys, what you're looking at, you're looking at the sun through a filter. Okay, it's filtering out anything that on this particular capture that isn't the 131 angstrom part of the light spectrum. Okay, anything that is not at that angstrom, you don't see. Okay, so, but let me say this too. That does not mean that visually it's actually this color we're looking at. You can assign these, these filters any color you want. So, you know, that it, it's a computer thing. It's a software thing there, okay? And they just choose to put the 131, this teal color. That's what they do. It's seeing, basically, it's seeing different gases. That's what when we're looking at the sun. So you can notice here that, you know, you see a, a couple of little dark patches. You know, you see the northern coronal hole up here, right? Barely, but it's there, right? So we go to this one. This is the one I show you guys all the time. This is the 171. That's the exact same capture. Just a different filter. 
do you see any black on there not really because you do some you see some you know faded parts but watch this okay now look this is the 193 look at the northern corona hole does that look anything like that it resembles it but it doesn't look the same okay and then here's this one is even more because this one here see the the 211 shows the coronal holes very well okay um so you're you're seeing it right there so when when you ask if it's black and why it's black it should be white is what you were saying um but what this is doing is it's all it is is looking for that 211 angstrom anything else in 8211 shows up as black okay it's going to be it's like it's not there so just like we can only see in, in a very, very limited part of the light spectrum, our eyes can only understand that this is the same thing, okay? So look at this one. You don't see any coronal hole action on that, <laughs> okay? That's the 304. This is the one we use to go, you know, to go look at these filaments. So it's useful in that, in that way, but that's why it's not um, white, okay? Because all you're going to see is the 304. Anything that's that part of the light spectrum is going to show up there. So that that's why, guys. Um, I hope I uh, you know kind of give you a better understanding of that. But that one compared to that one, and the only difference is it's just got a different filter on it. The sun is still there. It's not like it's not there. Um, you know where the darkness is. All it is is basically showing you where it's colder. That's really really what you're looking at. Okay, so. Anyway, um, we'll move on from that. Hopefully, I, uh, you know, I explained that easy enough that most people can understand. Okay, guys, um, this this is Comet Neowise, okay? This is the one we've been talking about that's going to be, you know, visible with the naked eye. Um, right now, it is at uh, perihelion. And what that means is it's as close as it's ever going to get to the sun. July 3rd is when it was supposed to be there, and it's there. So what that means is it's getting a lot of heat and a lot of uh, uh, brightness from that sun. So this thing has brightened extreme amount. But the, the thing is, because it is closer to the sun, we get a bigger glare. So it's harder to catch. So um, Chris Schur caught this one. Okay, this is out in Payson, Arizona. And so you're looking at it there. This is over at spaceweather.com. Um, but yeah, so this is what it looked like to him. You know, I'm not sure. I don't think he's seen it with his naked eye. Um, I think you probably could have, but it would have been really hard to see. Uh, let me back out of that and see what this says. Um, it says playing hide and seek with the monsoon clouds. Um, then it goes on to talk about the brightness and the level of that brightness. Okay. It says right here, closest approach to the sun, perihelion. All right. So when we're talking about anything at all, and we say the words perihelion, that means that it's the closest it will ever get to the sun. The earth has a perihelion too in its orbit. Everything does. Plus this thing is like really close to, to Mercury's orbit right now too. Um, it's passing really close <laughs> to Mercury. So um, it's not going to hit it or nothing. But what, what they're talking about here is how much it's brightened so much. Now if this one doesn't disintegrate like Atlas and... and um, uh, Comet Swan did earlier this year. This is going to be something to see on the other side. Um, and I've been talking about that for a minute. Now they're not 100% sure either way. So you know it's hard to put a put a definite yes or no if we're going to be able to see it um, with what you know with the naked eye. And um, again, like I said, you can go through there and, and look at all that too. But something else is going on too that, um, and I think they hit the nail on the head right here with this too. Um, it says lunar eclipse may be visible, but, okay, this is a, a, a penumbral lunar eclipse. Okay, what that means is that the sun, the, the earth is in between the moon, the moon and the sun. They're all lined up, right? But they're lined up in such a way that just the outside of the earth's shadow is casting on the moon. So all it does is it makes it faded looking. Okay, it doesn't completely cover it up like we think about when we think about eclipses. Okay, so if I click on that, penumbral, penumbral um, it actually takes you to this, and this kind of shows you what that looks like. 
Okay, you see how it never goes away? See how that right there at the top? That's what the full moment looked like. And as the time went by, it went to that color there because the earth was casting its shadow on there just barely, basically. It's the outside, outside uh, part of the earth's shadow casting on the moon. So it is something that, you know, you can, you can definitely, you know, know that that's happening. But it isn't something like you're going to go outside and you're going to see the moon disappear. Um, but this is this, this is called a penumbral eclipse. So hopefully, uh, you know, brought some understanding for you guys on that. I thought that was really interesting. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you a, a chart here. Um, when we're talking about magnitude, brightness, okay, <clears throat> they have a, an assigned number, right? When we're saying, hey, that comment is a, co that, that comment is a, a five magnitude. You know, that doesn't mean a whole lot to people unless they know what that five actually means. It's very similar to wire gauges. The lower the number, the bigger the wire is. Okay? So if you got a wire that is, let's say, or even with bullets. So you got a 12 gauge bullet. Right? That's going to be one diameter. It's going to be pretty, it's going to be bigger than a 9 millimeter bullet. Right? Or a 9 gauge or whatever, however you want to put that. Right? Um, but this is the same way. Okay. So this shows you what the magnitude versus what the objects are. Okay. You got the sun right over here on the top. It's a negative 26. When we go outside and we look up at the sun, it's a negative 26 magnitude. Now the full moon's a negative 13 and, and so on and so forth as you go down here. Right. With, with Comet Neowise being... Um, I think it's at a, a negative, it's a, like a negative 0.5 or something like that, um, right now because it's real close to the sun. Um, it's being affected more strongly now by the solar wind and, and all that stuff too. Not only just being close to the heat and everything else that's going on. Um, so <clears throat> when we're talking about this, we have to understand what the actual number is. Because it ain't going to mean nothing to you guys if I come up and say, hey, that's a that's a magnitude 10 on the bright chart, right? <laughs> You're not going to know what that means unless I tell you what how the chart actually works. So this gives you examples of what's going on, of what the magnitude is versus the objects. So the naked eye, uh, a negative 4, it's easy even seen from large cities like planet Venus. Okay, that's what a negative four magnitude object in the sky would look like. Okay, um, and it goes goes on down. So, if we look at this, you know, it says naked eye, a four. You see that? Thinnest naked eye stars visible from many smaller cities, outer sub suburbs. Okay, you get much more uh, dimmer than a four. It's really hard to see if you can even see it at all. If you remember, um, I think Comet Atlas was really close to that. <laughs> but um, you still have to catch it at the right time. It's going to be really hard to see with your naked eye, but it can be accomplished. Now, if you get a set of binoculars, you most definitely would be able to see a four. Okay, if you were looking in the right area. But then you can go on down through here and you can look at this. Um, you know, it planet uh, Uranus. Binocular objects from suburban areas, if you're out, you know, faintest uh, naked eye star visible from dark rural areas, okay? It has to be really dark, way out in the country to be able to see uh, Uranus with your naked eye. And it's going to be really small at that, okay? So, I just wanted to give you guys a, a, a general understanding, okay, what it takes and what these numbers actually mean, <laughs> Okay, also, when we're, when we're talking about this, we're talking about 2020 vision people. Okay, so, but I guess the best thing to, to realize here is the lower the number, the brighter it is. Okay, so obviously, the brightest thing to us is the sun. It's going to be a negative 26 magnitude. So when we're talking about something that's like a negative 1 or a negative 2, that stuff is most definitely seen with the naked eye. So hopefully this thing will make it make its lap around the sun and we'll be able to see it, be able to take our kids out there and, and show it to them. 
You know what I mean? I think it's pretty cool. Okay, guys. Um, this is the Schumann Spike. Uh, you know, I didn't do a video yesterday, but that happened yesterday. Okay, now, it did not happen on the time frame we were talking about for six days in a row. Okay? So that, that streak has been broken. Um, now, you know, if another pattern emerges or what have you, um, you know, it could, I guess, like I said, they're going to emerge, but something that happens in consecutive days like that, we, we got to assume that it, it's not something that's natural. It almost has to be, you know, intelligently, uh, done. It could be a side effect. Okay. It's something that we're doing. Right. The intent may not be to change the human resonance, but it might be a side effect of it, of something that we're doing here. Who knows? But, you know, that 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 streak, that pattern we were seeing is now, you know, that's, that pattern has ceased for right now. Um, that This was a pretty impressive spike, though, I have to say. Lasted for about, well, the most intense parts of it at the higher, higher hurt level. Um, lasted from what? Yeah, about two hours. Okay, now, something of note here. You see how this thing just abruptly went bam. Straight line. Okay? This is what I mean by flipping the switch. You look at that, that's like somebody just flipped the switch on, right? This over here tapered off. So what I'm saying, switch, no, flipping the switch, that's what I mean. We're not seeing this part over here. Okay, we're not seeing a ramp up. We're seeing an immediate bam, like something just boom. And again, guys, these are all pulsing. This one isn't right here in the meat of it, but if you look down through here, most definitely does look like it. So, and I've been seeing a lot of comments too, you know, about, you know, what the, the, um, the signature is looking like a, uh, a contraction monitor that you see in the birthing rooms. It most certainly does. So, you know, we can go back to Bible verses or even other stuff outside of that. And there's a lot of things to talk about the earth, you know, having labor pains. <laughs> is that what's going on? I don't know. But that is something to consider, you know. So we could look at this and be like, whoa, you know. But yeah, so that's what's happening with the Schumann. Here's the most uh, recent geoelectric field model uh, <coughs> time lapse. Um, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of anything going on here. Um, this little bit of flashing you're seeing is just normal, pretty much. Um, you know, we won't really pay much attention to this unless it gets into, like, yellows and reds, okay? And what you're looking at here is the effect of space weather on artificial electronic components like uh, uh, wire, transformers, all that kind of stuff, right? Basically, it's our electrical grid, <coughs> It's, again, it's, this model is only about a year old. I think it's really useful and neat, neat to see. Um, but, yeah, so we're not really seeing a whole lot there. Okay, guys, um, here's a geomagnetic activity chart. Um, I look for them to put out probably a cosmic ray alert on this. Uh, if this if this continues at this low level, cosmic rays will get in more easy. And I've talked about that before at length, actually. Um, and I'm, I'm working on some of that stuff to put in a playlist too, so people can go and look at that when they need to, if they want to know what something actually is, as far as like, what is a cosmic ray and all that kind of thing. I break it down really basic and make it like a two minute video so people can just breeze through it, pause if they need to, that kind of thing. Um, I already got a playlist. It's got like four videos on it right now. I think it's got coronal holes, uh, solar wind, solar flare, CME. I think that's what I have in there right now. Um, what what are those things, right? But anyway, with the geomagnetic activity being this low, if it stays this low, they will issue a cosmic ray alert. Okay, so just know that. Um, again, there's the sun. But this this is... Uh, I'm really not sure if this was expected right here. Okay. Uh, first thing we need to do every time we look at this this data right here guys is look at the the gra the actual range of what they're showing you now 280 to 360 kilometers per per second um is pretty normal on this graph okay and i say that because if it was like 280 to 300 the, the variations we're seeing here wouldn't be as grand is what i'm trying to say but this is very very fluctuant or variable okay 
And what I mean by that is when it when it shows you a data point on this, it's a point, right? So if one's at 340 like that one is, and then the very next data point is at 280, it'd be down here like this. But what if the data point it showed you was 320, and then the one next to it was like 319? You see how that makes a straight line? Just like that, okay? That's what I'm trying to show you here. Um, when we see these jumping up and down, that means it's very, very variable. It's going high to low really, really fast. I call it popcorn. Um, anybody that's been around here on my channel knows that, but for the new people, that's what I call it. I call it popcorn. Um, but we're not really seeing that big fluctuation with the density. Um, the temperature's fluctuating too, but it's not extreme. The wind speed itself there um, most definitely is fluctuating pretty good. Um, it's jumping really, you know, from 360 back to 280 pretty quick like. Um, we'll have to watch that and see what happens. Um, but the rest of it all looks good. Um, you can see here that this, this in mill model doesn't look like they're calling for any kind of really anything for the next five days. And again, I only trust that about two days out. So, and our Aurora forecast here on the left, you're going to see that that's not going to be very impressive either because we're not having any kind of geomagnetic uh, storms. So we're not going to see any kind of good auroras unless we get some space weather. All right, I do want to show you this. This is over at Seeds, okay? Um, for whatever reason, they're not updating this on the Lasco C2. Okay, you see the gray? If they were updating it, it would either be a light blue or a purple, okay? Purple means you've already clicked on it. The blue would mean that um, it, the data is there. You just got to look at it. The gray means there's no data there at all. So when we click on the gray, this is what we get. Nothing. It ain't going to even let us go there. So, um, but yeah. So why is that happening? Well, it could just be whatever, tool flaw, that type of thing. Because stereo, uh, stereo A down here is, is updating. And this is what we see. Um, I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't say that they're trying to hide anything, guys, because I, you know, I don't think that they are on this instance. But, you know, I could be wrong. Um, this did show up right here. I don't think that's your typical cosmic ray uh, uh, flaw. The shape of it's too irregular. It looks like maybe a small meteorite might have flew in front of the camera here. Um, it's nothing to be worried about. Um, we, we just don't know the distance of it, right? And this is this is looking from the side of the sun. Earth is here. This satellite's here. So, take that for what it's worth. We just don't know how far that object is from the satellite. If it's really close to it, that's a small object. If it's really far away from it, that's a large object. <laughs> okay? So, this picture that, if it was this size right there, it's almost, as, you know, about half the size of the sun. If it was out the distance of the sun, which I don't think it is. That's probably just a small meteorite going in front of the camera. But I wanted to show you guys that. Okay, guys. Um, hold on one second. Okay, guys. This is going to be a two-minute Wages World rant. Um, if you don't want to listen to this, I'm cool with that. I'm going to click off. It's all good. Okay? Um, but I, I've been getting a lot of questions on what my view is on a lot of things. So I'm going to give you just a little broad, you know, philosophy that I live by. Okay. First off, let me say this. Yesterday I did make a video because it got to me. I was so negative yesterday. It was ridiculous. So I wasn't going to come and let that spread into your guys' attitudes. I'm not going to make a video just to make a video. Now I could have made, you know, I had some stuff to talk about. But I'm not going to do that to you guys, okay? And I think we, if we all took that attitude, things would be better. So, where, where do I, you know, what, where am I coming with, with this stuff, right? Well, it all starts with confusion, in my opinion. They win, and when I say they, it's the people running stuff behind our political leaders. They win when we can be, when they can accomplish confusion. That's all they have to do. Because if they confuse us, it leads to fear. And then fear leads to anger. And then what, what do we do when we're angry? We make really, really bad knee-jerk decisions. 
I do it. So if we know that that was the root problem, then we can adjust what we're doing not to do that anymore. Now, the complete truth of everything is completely muddied at this point. We're never going to get to that aha moment that we know exactly what the truth is. And the main reason is because we all got little pieces of it, but none of us are willing to come together and make that and complete that puzzle. That's the true problem. It's on us. They might have started it, but we're allowing it to continue. We have to stop that. How do we stop it? Just be positive. Happiness is a choice, guys. It's not something that was promised or given to us. We have to choose to be happy, and we have to sometimes fight to go get it. So, if you know, like I said, that's just my opinion on what's going on. I'm not talking about any specific thing. I'm just talking about everything globally. And, you know, I know that some of this is probably a distraction about what might be coming from, you know, outer space or vice versa, guys. Who knows? And that's my point. We don't even know. It's impossible for all of us to know. We can know some of it. But man, we got a long ways to go. So let's take some steps back. Proceed forward with the positivity and let that positivity just spread. Just like the negativity did. That's how it stops. So that's my little rant there, guys. Um, you know, I, I was getting a lot of questions on my view on stuff. And that's what I would say to all that. So, um, God bless. Yeshua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.